Why should I care about any of this? And it's because for every dollar you make, you are literally paying 25 cents in taxes due to bad record keeping. So in total at this moment, Becky VT will pay $4,118 in federal taxes and that sucks what if becky didn't have to pay any of that what if becky could keep her standard deductible like as abby said earlier and not have to pay us anything well <laughs> this becomes my favorite part of the whole stream and I can finally show people how to legally evade their taxes. Quick disclaimer, I just want to say that we are not accountants. We're not providing any official financial advice. Anything taken in this video should not be substituted for actual accounting advice. If you actually need help with that stuff, I suggest hiring a professional. So last year, I did all my taxes by myself. I used a website that you probably all know, but we're not sponsored by any tax websites. So um, I really like sat down and I took the time to learn what it is I could write off as a VTuber. I was going to owe $3,654. wonder how much oh. I paid. How much did you pay? Nothing! The government owed me money! Wow! Yes! I itemized and itemized and itemized because I yeah. spent so much money on live 2D models and artwork. Oh, <laughs> And then the the modeling and then video editors. I spent, I didn't even realize I spent that much money because I did bookmark and I booked kept all my stuff. And then when I looked at my spreadsheet, I was like, wait a minute, I spent this much money on VTubing? It was an insane Expensive. amount. I know there's gonna be some people who are probably thinking, okay, well, how can I treat this as a business if I'm not making money? Well, guess what, Baka? You don't have to be making money to be considered a business when it comes to content creation. You can still write things off. You can still get to deductibles because it is not uncommon to be in a business and not be making money. I work at a boba oh. shop. I don't make a lot of money. A lot of people think as a YouTuber, this big YouTuber, I make all this money. I don't. I make, if I'm lucky, $300 a month. They're not super common in the VTB world, but they stigmatize ad deals in the VTB world because that's how most content creators in general make their money. So you see every YouTube video sponsored by the specific places because yeah. What I had done was I kept all the receipts for all that stuff. And yes, I do my W2s correctly. But however, I don't have them take out enough where they would give me back a tax return. I have them take out just enough where I would owe like zero pretty much. So because I don't get like a refund for my W2, all that's left is my 1099s. Remember how I said earlier how you can still oh. write things off and deduct things even though you're not making money as a YouTuber? That's what I did. I paid for everything with my with my boba shop job. That's even though it wasn't a lot of money, I saved my tips every week. Some of you know I worked two jobs, two jobs painstakingly just so I could afford my models. And it paid off in the end because I got to write it off my taxes. Because I didn't make a lot of money, all those tax um, write-offs and stuff, it made it look like I made less money because I profited at a loss. And that's oh. why they owed me money. So VTubing can be like a good, yeah, even though it's expensive, it can it's an like... investment. You should treat this like a business. You should want to make this into a business because even if you have a W-2, you can still make your taxes lowered by having both your W-2 and then, you know, having your independent self-employment tax. Because if you run at a loss, guess what? All that yeah. money that you pay for your W-2 taxes that makes your income, your gross income even lower. It's like a lot of complicated stuff if you look at it all together. Quick side note, I would like to specify one thing. As nice as it is to be able to profit at a loss in the first couple of years as a business, you should not be profiting at a loss every single year when you're filing for your taxes because that's a little bit suspicious. And the whole point of doing content creation as a business is for having the pursuit of money. If you're constantly profiting at a loss, the IRS is going to start thinking that this is just a hobby for you. So it's very important to specify that the things that you're doing and the things that you're buying is for in pursuit of making money and making this into a business. I want you right now, right now to say, I am a content creator and this is my business. You say it? I'm a content creator and this is my business. Yeah, congratulations, you are now a business. What can you write off when you are a business? You can take business deductions and the general rule from the IRS is that you can deduct any expenses that are ordinary and necessary. What do those words mean? Ordinary means it's common and accepted in your industry. Necessary means it's helpful and appropriate for your business. This is where it gets fun for us VTubers. The possibilities of what you can deduct are endless as long as you can prove it's ordinary and necessary. I, when I buy VTuber voice packs, I'm buying them to study them yes. for my voice packs. So. Yes. And why is that, Abby? Because we are VTubers and what is part of our job as being a VTuber? Is it 
networking, studying. And voice acting. And voice acting. Because it is very necessary and ordinary in our jobs as VTubers to have voice acting. When you're just a normal content creator, you can still deduct these. I, I don't know if you know this, like even if you're not a VTuber, let's say again, you're the clipper. Did you know as a clipper, if you're making money from it, you can deduct your computer, your audio, any other filming equipment that you might have, like your iPhone, your iPhone stand, your, your phone bill. Yes, actually, yes. Internet bill, partially. We will, oh yeah, we're gonna get into that. That's that's the fun, that's, oh yeah, yes, you're correct. You can also write off your editing software, music license, cloud storage, you have Google Cloud, Cloud or, or uh, what's it called? Super Dropbox. Chats. <laughs> that one is a little bit more tricky. However, social media scheduling tools, um, contractors, if you're hiring a video editor, a thumbnail designer, if you're hiring for like music productions and stuff, right? Cameraman and whatever, office space and whatever, that's a deductible. And paid advertisement. Did you know if you buy business cards to hand out at conventions, that is a deductible? That is paid advertisement. Oh yeah? Yes. Oh, wow, that's so much to keep track of. It is a lot to keep track of. So, and that's why I'm saying taxes when you are a content creator is not easy because this is how the government gets you. They're banking on the fact that you are not keeping the receipts and you're not holding yourself accountable for this stuff. This is how you can pay very little. This is how I pay very little money. Now, as a VTuber, we have the luxury of deducting more things because our entire identity is based off of the hard work of our artists. And guess what? It's a deductible, baby. Skeb yeah. commissions, live 2 e dr 3D models and equipment, VTube Studio Premium to get that watermark off. That's a deductible because it is your business because we are VTubers and it is ordinary and necessary to not have the watermark on our collabs. Yeah. Animations, music, lore videos, all of it, all of it. And the best part is too, in the United States at least, um, if you are a registered sole proprietor, um, in some states, you can also be eligible for deductions as well, which is like a little bit of a nuancey type of thing too. Again, that's why, again, get yourself a professional to help you with that stuff. But here's the other possible deductibilities that Abby was talking about. A lot of people think, well, I use my car for personal stuff. I use my phone for personal stuff. I use this and that for personal. That's okay. You take a percentage of it for your business. Yeah, whatever you think you use, yeah. Even a yes. uh, room, like rent, yeah, like you have up there. Yes, yes. You can make it very simple. Like I I used to do the simple um thing here. If I have a hundred square foot home and I use a hundred yeah. square foot, like I have a little room for my office, which I which is true. I do have a little tiny room for my office. That's like 10% off my deductible. I could keep it simple and I could get like a X amount of like tax deduction based off of it. Or I can get nitty gritty with the itemizing and showing my actual expenses. Yeah. So, you know, I bought foam panels in here. I can write down, I can deduct mm. the cost of that. Oh, wow. I didn't think to do that. Foam panels, oh. cables for your GoXLR. Um, let me see. Key lights, key lights, ring lights. Oh I bought posters God. for my office. That is a deductible because this is my office and I show it in my videos. I show it for content. It is part of my studio. My office is my studio. Oh. Yes. Your rent, your internet bills, your utilities. Granted, of course, a lot of big, big YouTubers have a certain strategy that's way more advanced and I'm not qualified to talk about it a lot, but they buy like studios and they actually rent little mini apartments because they can they can deduct 100% of that because it's solely used for business and it makes them it makes them profit at a loss which makes them oh, oh. way less taxes because of how all of that works the big boys don't pay a whole too lot because they're smart about it because you can write a lot of things off and you know how everyone's like do you want a receipt you always take a receipt always always take a receipt even if you want to be paperless have it text message to you, have it emailed to you, get it electronically and stuff. Always keep a receipt, keep a record for it because it's all you can take off. Guess what, Abby? Guess what? Guess what? You see down here? <laughs> I didn't guess anything. It's okay. Okay, so uh, back in the day, yeah. you could- Why are you taking them to McDonald's for a business meal? Because it's a because it's a business. We're discussing business. <laughs> the and business of getting French fries. Yes. And like, and, and the thing is though, back in the day, you could only deduct as about 50% of your meals if you're doing this as a business. However, that's changed in the United States, at least ever since the, you know, the, the bad, the bad virus that, you know, w affected a lot of us meals can now be considered a hundred percent deductible compared Whoa, to really? Yes. 
Is that just business meals or when you're like having lunch at work too? <clears throat> so here's the caveat with that. You need to be doing something with a colleague, an employee or a prospect for it to count as a business expense with meals. So let's oh. say, Abby, you and I went out to lunch and we're talking about YouTube. We're talking about VTubing. You know how like you and I will, you and I will sit down and we'll have content strategy um, meetings. Yeah. We did that over lunch. We can write that off. Wait, so we could like get boba and just yes. call and talk about like, oh, I was about to spoil the announcement. <laughs> Oh, oh. You ever been out with people with other content creators and like, oh, I'll pay the bill. I'll. You know why they do that? Because they want to write it off their taxes. But like, if you're paying for the bill for other people, like, I don't know if it's worth it. It can be, especially if they send you the money after. Oh, so you're you're lying then at that point because you can't put the full bill if they say. Oh. I I didn't say that. I mean, I can't control what people do when they get. I can't control. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like you could do that, but I've been like super scared because like if you get in trouble and you have to like you're in so much trouble that's why you pay with cash holy crap Barney, you're you're good at us <laughs> uh anyways so tax saving strategies uh so keep the receipts something that i kind of is a little bit of a hot take is i don't really care if you are an artist or like a video editor or whatever if i am if i am paying you money to do something i want you to send me an invoice if you ask me to send it to you as friends and family i will not commission you because you are screwing with my business by doing that i need to have an invoice i need a receipt or else i cannot write oh, yeah. off my taxes a lot of artists mm. and stuff will try to not have to report that as taxable income because if you, if they send you the invoice, that legally means that they are saying that they did accept that money for work, which then, you know, it's gonna have to be taxes and stuff like that, right? So that's why they'll try to tell you to send it as friends and family so that way they don't have to report it. And so when you are an artist or an, a video editor and you're worried about your taxes, charge the client a little bit more money. You can estimate what your state income tax is if you're in the United States at least. I don't know if you're in other countries, how that works, but you can like give a rough estimation of how much estimated tax you're gonna have to pay when someone gives you money and you can have the client pay for that tax portion. So that way you can be safe, still receive the money for your commissions and then have that little extra money for your taxes later on. Oh. This is what I do as an artist. I do charge That's people nice. tax. The reason why you want to keep all the receipts, and again, electronic receipts is fine. You want to prepare a book or a spreadsheet. Remember how Becky did the little like spreadsheet? That's kind of like mm -hmm. a basic idea and you want to be a little bit more advanced with it, but that is a good start. Yeah, there are programs as well that you can like get online that like really help you and break yes. it down. There are, there are. I, I don't really know a whole lot. I have one site listed down right now um, on here that I had just found out recently. I, I haven't tried it yet, but I plan on it this year because it, it's actually, I'll get into it in a second. Um, Let's say like Abby and I went out for boba and we were having a business meeting. I would take the receipt. I would, I would write on the receipt saying content strategy planning with Abby, mm, like networking you remember. Yes, and That's then I smart. take a picture of it, put it into my book and save it. What I do is I take a picture of any receipt and I send it to myself on uh, like a messenger app. Yeah. Cause I, I like the only things I send to myself are like short scripts and, and receipts. So if I just look through like media, I can just see all the receipts there at, at the end of the year. That's really smart actually. Yeah, no, that's smart. And another thing that you can do is you could create a separate bank account. So this is what I do personally. I have two bank accounts. I have my personal checking and then I have an actual business account. Yeah, oh my gosh, people are they're told to do that. That sounds like so much freaking work, so I'm not gonna. It's really not. Like all you gotta do is just tell your bank like, hey, like this checking account, I want it to be a business account. It's, it doesn't take that much. I don't even have a savings account. I mean, I, could, like, I mean, it's not like I have money to put in savings, but you can put very little money in savings. You don't have to have a savings. Do you have a checking account? I just have a regular account. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a college account. account which has lower fees i think yeah that's a checking account okay you have a student checking account you should make a business account though because this is the reason why is if you ever get audited and you have to prove to the irs that you the purchases you made with your your credit card or debit card are for the business having a separate bank account where you're using that card for your oh. business purchases is a very easy way to one bookkeep so that way you're not having to scroll through all of your like super chats from all your oshis and stuff and you can like show like all your business stuff quickbooks up oh. online is apparently like a site where you can sync your bank account directly for all your transactions so those meals those like you know the new equipment that you just bought it like you can literally take each transaction and then you have a little tab down menu so we got boba right i would take the boba receipt and then just type in meals and then it'll just save it for you there's like other oh, websites too now, these two over here are a little bit more complicated. Um, you don't have to do these. Remember how I said earlier about the big boys, the big shots, how they save a lot of money? Yeah. 
How do they do it? They do stuff like this. They create an LLC or an S Corp. But honestly, I know that the majority of you watching this are just content creators. And unless if you're one of the big shots and you're making a lot of money and you have a ton of assets, I wouldn't worry too much about this. If you'd like to learn more, we talked more in depth about it in the live stream, which I'll have linked down below. But otherwise, you have a pretty good foundation on tons of things you can write off. So I wouldn't worry too much about this. <sighs> itemize, itemize, itemize. This is why you have an accountant. If you can't, if you don't want to keep track of this, it's worth, it is worth it to hire an accountant who can itemize and keep all these receipts for you because they'll help you with your bookkeeping. We are hosting our own late night show. Mari, tell them about it. Yes, Abby and I have always wanted to do this really awesome, cool thing. Like, you know how like we're content creators? Well, what's it like to know what's our day-to-day -day life and the behind the scenes of what it's like being a content creator? We want to talk to like professionals, not just content creators. We have comedians. We have other really cool, awesome guests that we're going to talk to and actually get to know the extra dose of their life. Something you don't normally get to talk about. Um, yeah. No, we're super excited. The idea of Extra Dose is a behind the scenes look at content creation and performing arts. So it's a kind of related to this stream as we're giving a behind the scenes look whether you're a content creator and it's helping you or you, whether you're just curious about it uh but it will be uh instead of you know uh, this more research base it will be with experts so um our debut stream which will be unprivating momentarily will be with Hunnikin, who is a uh, mental health care worker and she'll be talking to us about overworking and loneliness in the gaming space and we'll also have in the lineup we already have a professional comedy writer for one of the biggest comedy shows ever. We have VTuber managers. We have different kinds of content creators, big uh, managers for IRL content creators. One of our goals as creators is to help bridge the gap between VTubing and content creation. We're all just good artists and good creators. So there shouldn't be so much of a division if possible. And this show will hopefully help not only be entertaining, but also help a little bit bridge that and make VTubing a little less strange and mystical 